It's clearly very important to understand what your MRD assessment is actually telling you because there was a very important study uh, that the American College of Pathology did where they surveyed about 120 labs around the country and asked, what is your actual threshold of detection using multi-parameter flow? And fewer than half actually stated that they could report an MRD result in ALL to the level of 10 to the minus 4. So there are many centers that you cannot get a bona fide MRD result because they're not running enough events on the flow cytometer. So you need to know that when your hematopathologist says, I don't detect any disease, well, how, how much did you look? Did you go to 1 in 1,000? Did you go to 1 in 10,000? Did you push more cells to the cytometer and maybe get to 10 to the minus 5? So you have to know that. Now, um, the molecular techniques have the advantage of being more sensitive. And historically, ASO-PCR was a very useful technology. However, it's a single patient test because each of those tests has a patient-specific primer and probe that's used during the quantitative PCR. That's been accepted by the Europeans as an acceptable way to measure MRD, and they've been very successful at setting up centralized labs that do ASO-PCR. Uh, in the United States, it's, it's unlikely the FDA would ever approve a single patient test. And so thankfully, the next-gen sequencing approach has entered with multiplex PCR so that every patient can undergo the same assay with the same reagents. And using this multiplex PCR and sequencing all the amplimers that come from that amplification, as long as you know what the original clonotype or immunoreceptor sequence that denoted the patient's cancer was, you can look for that at a deep level down to 10 and the minus 6 in subsequent samples. And so um, there have been many studies that have compared the uh, specificity and sensitivity of flow versus ASO, PCR flow versus next gen. And above 10 to the minus 4, they actually have great correlation. So if you have access to a bona fide validated flow-based MRD assay, that's great, use it. But if you don't, consider using the next-gen approach because it's now just something you send out to a reference lab. And above 10 to the minus 4, you can make the same decisions should the patient go to transplant or not, whether you use flow cytometry as your assay, as long as it's a validated MRD assay, or if you're using the next-gen sequencing approach. And what we do need to learn is, I totally agree with Bajal, is we need some studies to tell us, well, if I can look deeper, if I can make that dynamic range go two logs deeper and tell me that the patient has three clones out of a million still left in their bone marrow at week 16, does that convey a higher risk of relapse? And is that a patient that I still need to transplant? We don't know that right now, but the technology will enable us to do that. So hopefully we can get but, those but studies But anecdotally, done. we do know it in the context of Philadelphia positive leukemias. Uh, we've seen it. If someone fails to, to, to develop a complete molecular remission, as, as we were discussing earlier, we know that patient is higher risk of relapse. And so we're all get, already getting a sense of where what we're going to see in extrapolating from Philadelphia positive leukemias, we're starting to get a sense of what we're going to see in the Philadelphia negatives. In that, 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 that again, that, that with that increased sensitivity. The real question, and, I, and I, I'm gonna to turn to Ryan in a second here, is uh, you know, uh, are we ready to embrace it in the absence of clinical trials that support it? Um, I think in the right context, I think uh, Aaron's point is, is very true, and that's sort of my take on this, is I think, and again, I have to, offer this with the caveat that my clinical flow cytometry that I have access to is reference lab, COG quality flow cytometry. But I think if, if, if you have access to one of the more established technologies that have been used in clinical trials, multi-parameter flow that's reliable or ASO PCR, or if it's BCR able PCR, those would be my usual recommendations. But if, if, if you don't have access to one of those good assays that have been validated and have been studied, then I think next generation sequencing based MRD detection would be useful because I think um, while there are relatively limited data available to my knowledge that tell us how to precisely use next generation sequencing to make clinical decisions, um, I would say that MRD is definitely better than no MRD. Yeah. And I don't think we need a prospective study to validate a technology you know, above the level of 10 to the minus 4. We have lots of retrospective studies, you know, thousands of samples show great correlation between the technologies above 10 to the minus 4. So I don't think we need a prospective study to decide whether you can use one or the other to risk stratify for transplant eligibility or things like that. I think, again, if you want to go deeper than 10 to the minus 4, that's where we probably need some additional work. But, you know, let's face it, the reason that COG and the Europeans have incorporated MRD testing is they centralize the care of the patients. You know, 
pediatric patients always get treated in an academic center. In European center, or European countries, they mostly get treated in academic centers and they're all doing the same MRD through the EuroMRD and the EuroFlow consortia. In the United States, it's the wild, wild west. Adult patients are largely treated in community centers and there's no MRD testing being done because there was no way to do it. So one of the advantages, I think, of the next-gen approach is, again, the availability of a, a central lab that will just take a, you know, a tube of bone marrow uh, with EDTA in it and you know tell you what the clonotype is and then subsequent to therapy you can send another uh, bone marrow aspirin in EDTA and they'll tell you how much disease is there. The availability of that test really democratizes the access to MRD. Any physician in the country can use that assay and it, you know some MRD assessment is better than no MRD assessment and I think the guidelines are right. Every patient needs MRD assessment because it is the most important prognosticator for the outcome of that patient and again you get one chance and if they're not MRD negative at some milestone, and we can quibble, you know, end of induction or week 16, I think they're both useful. If they're not MRD negative, you've got to get that patient transplanted and probably do something to try and achieve MRD negativity prior to the transplant so the outcome of the transplant has a great opportunity to win. So.